はいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいThank heaven. Hey, Karen. Thank you. I honestly think it's just going to be us today. Um, That's cool. I'm I'm with something low key. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, low key and recorded automatically on CNCF. So say hello to whoever. Hi, CNCF. Me. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm always so curious, you know. So I like to drop Easter eggs sometimes and be like, hey. If you are listening, I'll give you some swag. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Who chops this up afterwards? Because um, we are, it should be not be, I kind of feel like we shouldn't be recording until we start. 100%. Um, and Amy chops them up. I usually okay. ping her afterwards and say, hey, there she is. I usually ping her afterwards like, Hey, we had some tomfoolery conversation going on at the end there. You should just chop that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Amy. Friends, how goes? Yeah. Good, good. Happy Talking about Friday. how like, we were just chatting away and we were like, I wonder who listens to this shit. <laughs> well, I can upload it and we'll find out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we were like, well, okay. So anyway, hello, Stephen. Welcome to co-chairing. Welcome. Almost. almost. <laughs> I think we need like right. two more votes on that. I'll check. Yeah, yeah, I think it's two more or so. Yeah, who do we, I can uh, uh, it's, go get some votes too if we need. Who do we need? I think it's like Jeff Brewer, Katie. Um, <sighs> I can I'll ping Katie right now. <laughs> All right. So um let's see uh, what I wanted to talk about. Um let me first get the freaking agenda tab out. It's in one of these 800 tabs. Boom. Lazy link in it for you. Yes, thank you. Um, one thing I want to talk about was the survey slash focus groups. And I say slash because no one wants to fill out a survey. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking like what I, what I initially, what we initially thought was half accurate, which was a, nobody's going to fill out a survey and B we're probably gonna have to go to a lot of them. Uh, yeah. And whether that's Slack channels, like Amy's saying, whether it's community meetings, like I kind like for some of the projects, especially those who are like in incubation, nearing graduation kind of things, we should probably show up to their community meetings. Like, hello. Um, Cause right now we have one response to the survey and we sent it to what hundreds of maintainers. And oh. the other thing is I also think I mean, and Amy, maybe Amy can correct me, but I also think people don't read that maintainers list. So, cause I like, I talked to so many people and they were all like, what survey, what email, what are you talking? And like, I, I talked to Amy about some of them, like, Hey, like on well, the Kubernetes side, but like some of the other projects were just kind of like, what? I mean, that's hard <laughs> to say as far as like the, uh, if they're not reading email, how will you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm if like. If they're not here, hey. please raise your hand. I'm just like, <laughs> hey. right? It's, it's it's legitimately the problem of if you're not here, please raise your hand. Um, and and so that's why I'm suggesting being able to say the Slack channels are a little yep. bit more active and probably a place to be able to put that up. Yeah, yep. exactly. 
So I think that's what we should do. Cause I keep, people keep pinging me about like oddly enough about maintainer circle. And I'm like, Hey, we have a Slack channel now. Did you see that email? And it's just like, Oh no. Uh, that's why I was just like emails. Yes. Yeah, like, Oh, and then that's when they like go in and like, look, obviously it's just like uh email obviously signs of the time but now we, now, now joining the maintainer circle <laughs> which consent to like just all yeah did you see it no yeah. <laughs> see? <laughs> see? so it so it depends though right uh, um <laughs> it's because the defining what a maintainer is and who ends up on the official CNCF maintainers list, right? There's like a, a, so Karen, it's possible that you're not even on that list. No, I can double check this one. But the thing is like, if you're listed as an owner in the uh, maintainers file, then you should be on the lists. Now, granted, it doesn't always happen because like, this is kind of a manual process. You have to tell us that you've updated the maintainers list. But um, I think the bigger challenge here is really that like, we're not getting the reach for the maintainers that we thought we were getting. Yeah. No, yeah. zero. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think it's like, and this is what I've discovered in Kubernetes. There's just this like black hole between CNCF and everybody else in Kubernetes. And it's like, that's why I keep like running into, I'm like, what do you mean you didn't know about TOC election? Like y'all are in other CNCF projects, a lot of these cases. And it's just like, oh, I didn't know we could vote for that. I thought that was just TOC. And it's just like, we are doing a really bad job of this project of communicating the like CNCF stuff too. You know what I mean? Like that's that like trying to like figure out how to improve that like maintainer comms with like yeah. watering it down, right? So but I, I, I do want to I do want to shout out Brigade. They filled out the survey, so okay. way to go, way to go, Brigade. Wait, that's the one. <laughs> that isn't oh. Carolyn. <laughs> Carolyn comes to these meetings though. So. Yeah, yeah. So, so brigade, and it wasn't Carolyn that filled it out. I don't was it the recording like Kent or Radu? I don't know. Yeah. It's probably one of them. But I was super pumped. I was like, "Go brigade, go, go, go!" Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> get a, a leaderboard with response times. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> we should actually shout out brigade somewhere. Like, thanks for filling out the survey. I don't know something like one of one of 500 <laughs> yeah. um we can we can hit the 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 tweeters and all that good stuff too um yeah oh you know what too i need to um the other thing is i need y'all because i've done a glance over i need to get y'all to review the blog that julie wrote uh, okay. julie with cncf and then what we can do is release that release the crack in there so that's okay. one um and then, hold on, community meetings. I really want to go to the Prometheus one. That's just me because I've Ooh. never been to a Prometheus community meeting. So I feel like it would be good to reach out to them regardless because I want to get a couple of their takes. Um, Slack channels. So you'll see me in a couple of the community meetings because I just have never been anyway and I want to go. Um, all right, so next week I'm going to get on the horn. We're going to get on the horn with some Slack channels, community meetings, um, get the blog post up. So if y'all, let me hold on, let me get the link to that too. It's in the contributor strategy channel somewhere uh, scrolling up. Hold on, scroll, 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 scroll. Um, Here it is. Nope, not it. Um, well, we do kind of talk a lot. I didn't think we talked that much. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry, I'm late. I okay. closed my calendar tab and so wasn't paying attention. Okay. I also pinged him because I'm yeah. bad at this. DM. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. If Amy hadn't pinged me, I would have been like 11 15 and I would have been. <laughs> what oh, wait. meeting? Did I have a meeting? <laughs> Did I have a meeting? Did I had know? a surprise meeting uh, land on top of my account. I was like, oh, this will be my slot to like prep for the contributor strategy meeting. And someone's like, hey, I need to pull you in on something. <laughs> 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 Happy almost Friday. Yeah. Now anyway, my other point was um, I'm getting the sense that people have already started taking the holiday. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah exactly like the so like yes i totally agree we should work on being able to get like the word out a little bit more but i think people have just stopped looking at email and general anything right now oh i'm not planning on doing it today okay I'm just about, checking. yeah i'm talking about next week Got it. yeah and I'm, i mean we we released it over a week ago like a week and a half ago and still only have one response so that's why i'm like i think we should just go the focus group the focus group method at this point and ping people in slack and just do it verbally um and i can't find the freaking link i'm wondering if i have no idea hold on i, I i'm searching for julie Josh, do you have it handy? It's the blog post that Julie wrote. It like went away on my. Oh, I never saw the blog post. It what? It was in um, the contributor strategy. Mm, hold on. Did she? Did, post are you it? sure that it actually went out? No, it's she sent it to us to review. It's in right. Oh, right. your DMs as well as in the contributor strategy Slack channel. Um, hold on. Damn it. Um, mm -mm. yeah, I don't know where the, actually, you know what? I know where it is. Cause I actually was organized. Oh, one. found it. It's an, it's actually an issue. Um, in the chat. Awesome. Thank and you. And I'll link that to the doc as well. And... All right. So yeah, that's something we absolutely have to review. And if we could, let's try to review that today. And then we can tell Julie to pretty much ship that ship at whatever it. time is appropriate next week, whatever best blog time. <laughs> so yeah, if y'all could yeah, review there that. We go. And then we're pretty much done with the outreach portion. Um, All right. Do you want to explicitly list out any like projects you want to reach out to? Um, if you think that's good. Um, yeah, okay, never mind. I, I think it would think be good. I mean, I can obviously reach out to all of the projects I'm already shepherding. Yeah. Yeah. I and then maybe we'll see if that's like enough to get started or I don't know. Yeah. Okay. We just need some data to get started. Yeah. I feel like Although at this point there are enough Americans on those projects that I'm going to want to wait until next week to reach out to them. Oh yeah, no, we're not doing any more reach outs. We're just saying that next, this is us planning for next week's reach yeah. outs. Okay. Um, so, um, Josh, you have the next item, which is governance doodle. Yeah. Um, well, so that's actually already been chosen um, because um, all five people who responded are able to make 10 a.m. Pacific on Tuesdays. So that is the new meeting time. So, I mean, so here's the, the problem. Uh, did we, oh, I, there was an email out for it, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, an um, email went out of the list. I need to put an email to the list saying that's the new meeting time. So, I mean, one one thing about it is like there, last I checked, there were maybe like 17, 19 people on that list. Do we think we're sending out a doodle and not getting enough people? Um, because like, no, from what I've seen, we've... The people who responded are the people who've actually shown up for governance meetings in the past, except for Terrence. Um, so, so I say that to say, are we limiting our scope to the people that have been showing up and not giving people who have, who would potentially want to show up to a governance meeting an opportunity to? The, I guess I'm more concerned with the people who have already contributed than the people who might contribute, but might not, if you follow me. Oh, I've had a no, lot of I... people express interest and never show up for anything. Well, I, um, I totally feel that like if I'm if I'm doodling, I'll prioritize the, the times yeah. that the maintainers chose, right? Or sub project mm -hmm. owners or something like that. All I'm saying is like, I think the scope, I, I think where we sent it is a little short. It's not enough people on those lists. 
Um, if they don't show up, if, if like if it's still the same time and they don't show up, then fine. But um, that's just just a uh, passerby thought. Suggestion. We let this hold through the summer um, and see what kind of, frankly, uh, attendance you get, Josh. And then in September, um, we can revisit as far as like if this time is actually working. Yeah, that gives us like two months. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah. My yeah, my only worry is that like especially because there are not a lot of people on the main t on the on the um, contrib strat uh, mailing list right now, and we're talking about people not really reading their emails anyway. <laughs> um, are we are we not giving ourselves an opportunity to have more people in that that working group? Is what I was thinking about. That's yeah. why I'm like stressing our outreach. Like, and that's why I'm like, we actually, I'm going to have to like get face to face and people's like in their, in their yeah. project. What's up? Hi. Hey, exactly. <laughs> like, in their Slack channel, like I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, hey, how are you? Like, we are here directly. Hello. <laughs> like, I really think that like, unfortunately, like, I don't like that. I, I do like it, but obviously not because it's 50 projects and we're only so many humans. Mm -hmm. But life yeah i mean it's i think it's convincing us i mean the I, you know the the hope is that the, the blog post will do some of that and you know our, our continued uh um twittering and jumping around our respective projects will will say like hey come to this right because we do want it to be um ideally it's more um it's more pull polling data than um and coming in and, and jumping from project to project, right? People should eventually see this as a place to go for things, um, as, a, as opposed to a place that will track you down. Because <laughs> um, that's not sustainable for us. Well, right. That's why I'm like, that's why I want to do that initial, like, hello, you're, you may not see me here again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so what, it's 10 a.m. Tuesday. I'm taking notes. 10 a.m. Tuesday. Is it in bi-weekly Tuesday? Okay. Josh? Uh, yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, it's starting already with the on next, the calendars. Yeah, starting with the next meeting on July 7th. Yay. All right. And then the next item on the agenda was uh, charter changes. It's not something we necessarily need to dive in deep here, um, but I'm just, I just put it as an issue just so that we can remember some of this stuff because right now our charter is pretty much the bootstrap charter and we've pretty much graduated from most of those phases. So, and most of the roadmap that's in the charter is done. Um, <clears throat> so either making some other new roadmap or making it more full, uh, making a more full charter now that we know a little bit more about what the hell's going on here. Um, mm -hmm. That's really it. And then obviously Carolyn also be wanted to bundle in the new chair change as well. So if there's uh, any other charter changes that y'all suggest, let's- Are the chairs explicitly listed in the charter? Um, Cause I don't think they should be or need to be rather. Um, some gaps on that side as well as I noticed that I didn't want to bundle it with my PR, but I can send a follow up. Um, we don't have SOD listed as one of our TOC liaisons. Yep. We're not listed in the TOC um, repo at all. Um, well, rather, we don't have our own page thing, right? Um, we are listed uh, on the README, but not um, as a separate README that I guess would link out to our repo or something. Right. Um, yeah, we are. Hold on. Yeah, we are in the charter. And I think the reason why we did that is because that's what the other CNCF projects do. Gotcha. Um, what, yeah, are, I don't, what are your concerns with that? I, I, yeah, I don't have super strong opinions. I think that like just having one less place to change, you know, like when we do, when we do a yeah. charter update and in, in Kubernetes say, right? Like we don't, we don't look at updating chairs or include chairs in the charter. Um, it's just, yeah, yeah. From a, an approvals side, you know, not having to look at chairs um, and just having them, if they're listed in one place, then we only have to update them in one place. It's a, it's a, it's more of a laziness factor than it is a charter specific factor. 
And I don't think I can share my screen. I'm, I'm going to try right now. That's what my confused face is for. <laughs> um, let's try it. Uh, nope. My MacBook's locked down. Sorry, MacBook. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, security and privacy at Apple. Sorry. Um, all right. So I know I was just going to do a quick boardwalk. Um, any other thing, comments about Charter? Josh, do you feel like you have anything else that you want to do Charter changes for outside of the roadmap -y stuff? No, not really. Um, since we found out that chairs actually have to be approved by the TOC, yep. there's, it would be nice to have a line about that in the Charter, yeah. just so it's explicit to yeah. say, hey, chairs are approved by the TOC. I mean, I know that's in the TOC documentation, but it's hard to find. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, further for the TOC documentation, what it what it mentions is an election to appoint chairs. Basically, it, it sounds like it, it reads for the instantiation of, of a SIG, not yeah. necessarily for its continuing uh, operations. So I think we should we should help to clarify that too. Okay, I just put that in the issue. All right, um, so we'll get to charter changes next week as well. And then Amy, uh, as far as charter changes go, once we've submitted the PR TOC, we'll need to vote on that too, correct? I'm not sure. I need to go back and look. Okay. I mean, we're so not I'll wait for the PR to come through and then I'll, I'll work to be able to clarify this. Um, actually, this would be a lovely thing to be able to put into your Tuesday slides. Uh, yeah. Yay. Yeah. So, yeah. so <laughs> speaking of probably our most important point um, that is not on the agenda yet is that we have a meeting on Tuesday yeah. with the TOC and we have to uh, do the presentation for it. So thank you, Amy. Uh, for, one slide, you'll be for fine. Reminding us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's only one slide. Steven. One slide, you'll be fine. It's, it's definitely yeah. not serious. That's too serious. So we need chair vote on there. We need. Um, do we do do we do charter vote? Question mark. Um, what else should we be updating with TOC on Monday or Tuesday? Um, Time. Next step is for whatever working groups we have spun up already. So, so mention. I think it's worth mentioning the new time for the governance sub project. The um, uh, that we're oh, going sorry. forward. Yeah, that we're going to pump the uh, blog at some point, the blog post at some point, and then also uh, that the maintainer circle will be uh, coming soon. DM. I said that five times already. I'm not gonna lie. Um, we're worth repeating. I mean, honestly, like, so, like, I, I think, I think specifically for that one, that trying to do outreach across, like, we, we said it already, but like, trying to do outreach uh, across multiple projects, right, we have to make sure that people are aware that we exist and can come to us. Um, so we aren't doing um, consistently trying to, to reach across multiple projects. All right. Karen, did you go to the last, um, oh God, is it already Friday? Um, contributor growth meeting. Did is you? It, I had a, I think it was during like Camp Cloud Native, so it was conflicting. Okay. Yeah. Um, have you been to any? Because I have not, and that's why, as I've had a time conflict. What's, what are y'all, tell me about what are y'all working on in there? Because I want to add that to the TOC thing as well. Um, I think there's like templates. Okay. Yeah, for like, um, like contributor guides and yep. Okay, cool. Thank you. And then I think as of right now, we are reconsidering our meeting time. So I don't know if we settled on any, yep. time, but there's a yep. doodle. Yeah. Time, time and calendar stuff. No, I'm just kidding. I won't write that. Um. <laughs> We're trying so to get you to come. <laughs> I just said templates coming along, uh, contributor guide, eat, eat, uh, eat L, um, and then that we're also putting together a template repo, like some kind of boilerplate, contributor boilerplate repo. Okay, cool. Um, and then Josh, what did you add outside of like the new governance? sub time of uh, time. What did you want to update for um, governance? 
Uh, so next meeting, we're going to be talking about um, the remaining sort of governance documentation, which is the main product of the governance WG um, that um, uh, we need to do and trying to hammer that out um, so that people can get working on individual pieces of it. Um, the, um, and the other thing is, um, this is important, the multi-organization requirement um, for graduated projects is going to be one of the main agenda topics at the next TOC meeting. Um, so uh, that's continued to be a major item of discussion. Um, the, um, and it's going up to the TOC and when the TOC makes final decisions, it'll be our job to actually document those and then write advice to the projects on how to fulfill the requirement. Um, so question, uh, is there is there project onboarding uh, related things that you have listed already? Um, yeah, if, um, hold on, let me, let me paste the outline that I have currently as a Google Doc. Okay, um, um, I say that because uh, now becoming a maintainer of uh, DEX and having that moving yeah. into the CNCF like yeah. doing the process right now. So it'd be good to right. kind of like look yeah. at it with beginner eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it would be lovely if, if you can actually, cause like part of it is um, basically I was thinking of, well, hold on, let me find the doc. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I have it divided out into sort of two major divisions, right? There's the stuff around the requirements and then there's the stuff that's general governance advice aside from the requirements. Um, and, oh, sorry, Google Docs. Um, the, um, and, um, you know, and so one of the things I know that we have been sorely missing is a document that says, so you wanna become a sandbox project, here's all the things that you need and how to actually do them. Because mm -hmm. I'm going through this with some of Red Hat sandbox projects later, Amy. and we and need anything. Is, we can talk there, about like the sandbox stuff, like you know, uh, on a future meeting with me. Yeah, yeah well, weird. some of it, like one of one of the sore points is roadmap, mm -hmm. because what is a roadmap depends on which TOC member you ask mm -hmm. um, currently. So um that's something that i think we're going to need to write out take to the toc have the toc approve it because there has been differences of opinion there and it has led to projects having to rewrite things several times i so, look forward to you all fixing this yes <laughs> yeah. right. and, and i think we're going to come across a lot of those where we're going to need that feedback loop with the toc where we do a hey this is what looks sensible to us based on the existing written requirements yeah like is can this crazy please, Are we... <laughs> yeah can can you please approve or revise this so that the projects have detailed written requirements and they're not guessing on what they need to provide because yeah. that's the situation right now. And totally agreed that um, it being confusing and having to rewrite it multiple times is not great. Um, yeah. We, so for me on, on the sandbox level, you know, what I'm thinking about is uh, the, the first stuff, I'm, uh, you know, the first set of stuff that I'm thinking about is what's the baseline requirement for us to be in uh, com considered to be in compliance as a mm -hmm. uh, sandbox uh, CNCF project. Cause there, there's like that stuff and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff, right? Um, and, then, and then how do we start looking ahead? Like what does it look like to get out of the sandbox and into incubation, right? And then drawing, um, yeah. it'd be interesting to see what a project plan looks like for that across um, a, a yeah. generic project plan, I guess, right? Yeah, and, and I really do want to get the sense of an idea of sort of progressive maturity, because for example, right now in the sandbox requirements, it says you must have governance documentation, but it doesn't really say what that consists that of. Anything, and then yeah. it doesn't add any requirements aside from multi-organizational um, for um, graduated. Mm -hmm. And I really think there should be a sort of progressive maturity here, right? because I think for incubating projects, it should be a requirement of, hey, you just have to have some documentation for how governance actually works and that structure needs to be theoretically open. 
Whereas yeah. for graduated, there should be a lot more scaffolding for how people progress to governance roles. So, yeah, so I think that uh, it, one part of that, because the, the meeting that I was in right before this is later, Karen, um, is uh, around sustainability, right? Because um, we often are kind of running at standing up these projects and then have to get to the point where we have to pull back and look at the way we do certain things. And, and if that's sustainable, like if you think about the way we do reviews in GitHub or the way that bots yeah. work and yada, 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 right? And like, how do we get people looking at that stuff earlier, right? So mm -hmm. like for, for Dex, it's like, okay, well, I know we need a website. We don't have a website right now. I know that there are, you know, a hundred issues or something and, and, and a few pull requests in there that need to be triaged. Like how do we appropriately do triage? Like how do we make sure that um, a project as they're, as they're uh, maturing, um, the all of the um all the process isn't strictly on the maintainers right how do we how do we ha build things in place to make sure that you know they don't have to be the only ones doing yeah uh certain, certain yeah things. well and one of the things that already came up in last week's governance meeting um was the suggestion and you know we'll propose this for graduated projects but at least at the graduated level the project should have some kind of community manager um mm -hmm. You know, whether that's, you know, a staff member assigned by one of the sponsorship companies or somebody from the community or, you know, something else. But, but there actually needs to be a community manager role at the level of graduated project because, you know, otherwise, even if the project's in great shape at the time that they're promoted to graduated, they're not necessarily going to stay that way. Right. Um, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. The... Um, and, you know, and that might lead to a CNCF program where, you know, if a project is too distributed among various sponsors for anybody to assign one staff member that maybe they pay the CNCF to have a community manager. Right. Um, but the, um, I think it's something that a lot yeah. of projects haven't really thought about. Um, so uh, because mm -hmm. Yeah, no, keep going. Because they're not, because they're not used, because they come from teams who are not used to having access to community managers, and so it's just not something they even think to ask for. Yeah. Yeah. When you were when you were saying that, it got me thinking about like what does a program for that look like, and then a program of those programs, right? So if there are program mm -hmm. managers, community managers within each of those, and I mean maybe this is maybe this is exactly what we're talking about, like with maintainer circle, right? But mm -hmm. the um, you know, the idea that a bunch of community managers can get together, a bunch of program managers, um, and maybe they're the ones who, they're the ones who coordinate giving updates to the CNCF based on project status or something, right? So, like, that's kind of how I'm operating for, for DEX right now, right? Yeah. I think it's kind yeah. of like that. Yeah, I mean, it has to be staged, because, like, sandbox projects, as a rule, are not going to have community managers. Yeah. Unless they're only in the sandbox because... I mean, there are some start, larger, yeah, better funded yeah. projects, but I can tell you for a lot of the sandbox projects I deal with, like their total engineering staff is three people. Um, yeah. And so they're just not going to have a community manager person. Yeah. Um, for I mean, for me, it's really like bolstering. I would, I would see, see like the first step of bolstering maintainership, right? Mm -hmm. um, providing, you know, providing means of, you know, because the, there are lots of things to do on that list. Um, of of onboarding for the CNCF, but um, you know probably the biggest one is like, do we know who adopts our project today, and, mm -hmm. and do we know like because those are ideal opportunities to bring in maintainers, right? And do we know who'd be willing to be a maintainer? Do we know what's required? Um, because once you start getting to that larger project level, I mean, we deal with it in Kubernetes, right? The you know who's who's a reviewer, who's a, who's a, a prover, who can be that stuff. Do we understand a clear path to get to that point, right? Mm -hmm. So establishing that stuff early on is, um, I think, I think is really important. each i wanted to actually i'm actually thinking about doing a manifesto Ooh, my first one in my life hey <laughs> like and the funny thing is now that i'm not at goog i'm like ready to do the manifesto and goog is like, <laughs> all about the manifesto so i'm just like life <laughs> it's it's all it's all timing right you know when it when it's when it's right it's right <laughs> 
Um, all right. I also have officially wrangled in Karen to help out with maintainer circle too. I told her that one of my biggest problems yeah. right now is um, we have some of the content, we have the goals, we know what we want to do. My blocker right now is that I don't want it to be another Zoom meeting. Like, yeah. um, but at the same time, like maybe our first one should just be like that to get us off the ground. But anyway, Karen's really good at helping out with like, you know, obviously like the camp cloud native, like just being a little bit more creative on the like meeting side. So um, I asked her. Organized like, in general. Uh, yeah. I mean yeah, like I coordinating. Out how to be creative here because I can always run us a boring zoom meeting. Like, yeah. I can but, do that right now and like whip us up an inclusive language Zoom meeting, but like me. No, so. I I really I really don't want and I and I think I think I probably speak for a lot of people saying that like mm -hmm. another meeting is not the plan, <laughs> right? Right, another meeting that doesn't like derive um the the right amount of values is not a, a good plan. I think that um what I would like to see out of the maintainer circle is that you just you feel it yeah right? like you feel supported right and yeah. that doesn't need to be on a meeting i don't think that trying to get all of our maintainers in a room yeah. uh on zoom is going to be effective anyway right um but i want you to feel that presence know that you have people that you can reach out to to, to bounce ideas off of so i think that you know maybe even as um the first start is getting more people on that mailing list yeah. right because if it's if it's only like seventeen to twenty people right now, we can we can do better, right? Yeah. We can um, so that could that could be a first start. And if we're just kicking <laughs> ideas around on on uh, on the mailing list to start, um, you know, Sig Arch has an idea where um, the way they they run their meetings is essentially you don't um, you don't get onto the the agenda unless you've discussed it on the mailing list first, right? And and it's it's a little bit like I like for SIG release I, my meetings are a little bit more loosey goosey, um, free form. If you there are a few top level agenda items, but we can talk about literally anything um, during those. But I do like on on the architecture side, like you're forced to have a deep discussion about some of the stuff before we say, all right, let's bring in some meeting and make a decision, right? Um, so we you could like smaller groups like under 20 people um, and then they would just like fill up, but like, you know, kind of like what we do for the chairs and tech leads where there's the same theme each month. Obviously there's going to be different conversations based on the different people there, but we're all talking about similar things. So like for instance, July, if it wasn't July already, um, July, we could do like 10 mini maintainer circles on inclusive language but we give them all the same materials and and then we kind of somehow like combo all of that knowledge in like a place and, and like obviously this is all like tbd this is just in my head um but some kind of way for us to do the smaller chunk thing because i like what you're saying i don't want a hundred people to show up to the Zoom meeting. And honestly, we could probably get over 50, honestly. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I mean. Across all of these projects, like when we're, if we're actually pumping this stuff um, everywhere, yeah, we could end up with a, a bunch of people on these. So, I, you know, for, for me, ultimately, I would love to be able to, you know, to this mini maintainer thing, I would love to be able to like review a doc and then be like, okay, done, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, yeah. th that's the aggregate of yeah. those 10 conversations or something, right? And yeah. then produce the larger, the you know, the top level doc to say like, okay, well, this is our policy for that thing. Um, yeah. so, I mean, you, you look at um, naming and um, so for working group naming, which for people on the recording was just formed on the, uh, for uh, as one of the uh, Kubernetes uh, working groups um, that's dedicated towards, uh, you know, determining what inclusive language looks like in the project and, and um, moving moving towards eliminating some of the non-inclusive language that may be in the project today. Um, the 
we made a strategic choice um, to work with the people that we're working with right now. Um, so the, you know, if you look at the the makeup of uh, of the the chair section, right? Um, you've got you've got representation from uh, contributor experience and and docs as well as the COC um, or the COCC uh, Code of Conduct Committee, and um, but also. Uh, looking deeper at that, you've got representation on the LF and the CNCF level, right? So the idea with Celeste and Zach um, was, was to also work on doing this on the CNCF level um, so that it's not, just, uh, it's not just information that we produce as a project that can potentially be used for CNCF projects, but more so uh, dog fooding and information that can be used as a template to define policy on the CNCF level that is enforceable across all projects, right? So we're trying to think bigger there. So get, definitely getting maintainer ideas. Um, I saw that Derek had mentioned, um, you know, Red Hat has a, a doc out about inclusive language. I think Google has one too. Um, but like, yeah, getting everyone, getting everyone grouped together and figuring out how to do this as a, as a team makes a lot of sense. Um, All right, <clears throat> so I feel like a good goal for us would be to launch in August. It would have been really great to launch around KubeCon, but like, I don't like now. Which we have... one? <laughs> well, I mean, August, August KubeCon, the <laughs> Europe, Europe slash August. Um, <laughs> but we don't really have any. Yeah. Of... How I could, how we could still do this without being on the schedule. Well, I, I think that, I think that you know, as long as it's happening in the background and and, and we're still pushing it, then it's fine. If we want to say that it's a post KubeCon launch, I'm just trying to think of like from the perspective of people that might be working on something for KubeCon or pushing towards KubeCon. I don't want to add another task to their list. Um, I know that like keynote prep is in, you know, is in the works for me and people are starting to like get their deadlines for recording talks for KubeCon. And um, yeah, so I, I think a few things going on where we don't, uh, we, we shouldn't necessarily add to, to people's plates. Um, but I do think um, that it does give us a, an opportunity to get the message out. Um, we just have to think about how to do that in a, I don't know, in a nice way. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I definitely want to take advantage of uh, kind of uh, critical mass of, of a con. Could Nancy add something about the maintainer circle in her comms about the intros and stuff for the community groups? Um, yeah. yeah, probably. Um, and I mean, this could even be, yeah, this could even be slipped into uh, keynote as project updates or something like that right um just we we can i think we can figure out a clever way to do it let's let's um chat more secretly later <laughs> all right well did anybody have anything else to talk about today i mean we definitely have at least a 10 minute update for toc so as long as we have 10 minutes then we're fine um, oh, actually, I did want to say one thing, um, and I do need eyeballs on this one. Um, this is about, I think, Cube Edge. Okay. Some folks pinged me, um, and where is it? I'm going back to my Slack. Is it Cube Edge? Is that the right one? Am I saying the right one? <laughs> like, there's too many cubes, y'all. Um, yeah, Cube Edge. <laughs> Yeah, Cube Edge. I, I'm still waiting for Qbert to be a project. Yeah, Cube Edge. We can do. I don't know what it'll. Do. I don't know what it'll do, but it should make a loud clunk whenever you shut it down. <laughs> it's like I could have sworn I turned my speakers off, and yet yeah. Qbert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So they made references in their due diligence that like the community is growing and um, people pinged me and said, what do you think about this group? 
Um, what do you think about their contributor, their contributor strategy? And I have not read it. So um, if, and then Josh, if you want to just take a, take a brief look at like their governance. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I, we don't need to give some huge due diligence. We weren't asked for that. It was just a glance over kind of thing. Um, I don't think we should give due diligence unless the TOC officially asks us for due diligence. Um, but at the same time, I feel like we can say, hey, good job, or hey, why, why are you doing it this way? Um, I, I, w I would say we could, um, is a person a maintainer? Or they just passerby of cube edge? Like what, what's yeah, their it was, status? It was a passerby and then it was somebody on TOC. Um, uh, okay. It, it was a passerby TOC comment. It wasn't a, like, I, that's what I'm saying. It was, and I told them specifically, hey, you should get TOC to like tell us these things officially. So yeah, uh, it's, this is not an official TOC ask. This is someone on TOC that was like a little confused. Yeah, check it out. Um, yeah, I would love to see the doc. Um, it would be cool if uh, eventually we got to a place where, because like for me, I, you know, we're not, we're not TOC, but like for me, I see this as almost like a, uh, a presentation, right? Like, yeah. come, like, you know, come to one of our meetings, like we block out some time, come to one of our meetings and check out like, uh, and, and talk to us a little bit about what you're doing. And maybe, you may, maybe the folks in the room can get ideas maybe that becomes something you know part of something official that we do right and i think the concern with the, i think the concern that a lot of folks had in the beginning when we were talking about when we were trying to form our charter is that we didn't want to do it for a million projects um mm -hmm. or that we just don't have the people yet for a million projects kind of thing yeah so staring at this really quickly i mean the you know, I think about this, you know, I'm looking at this issue and I'm, I'm looking at, um, you know, thinking about uh, the way we do onboarding for like release managers or something, right? Um, and, and they have they have an onboarding doc now for uh, onboarding issue template, I think, for, um, for sandbox projects and so on and so forth. Um, but like, I want that to be a checkbox, checkbox thing, right? Like what does consideration for, for incubation look like? Cause it's great to read stuff, but yeah. it's even better to be able to like the make the stuff that you're reading actionable. You're like, Oh, that's, we already did that We're done. Right. Um, yeah. and, and it makes you feel like you're making progress, uh, across it. So, um, let's see. Some of these graphs that they give are just like, who cares? Sorry, Cube Edge. Um, and I, I, that's why I'm like, I don't know if that's TOC telling them that they need these certain graphs. But like, why right. would we care about commits per repo? Um, I, think, I think they're strictly trying to show activity, right? Because one of the expectations is that there's uh, consistent activity across time. Um, but so we can show that but, in like 800 million different ways though you know what i mean it's like well but again I, this is this is one of the problems with not having detailed written requirements yeah. as in the toc has said you must show activity and they haven't said what specific metrics will fulfill that and so the people who are proposing these just say well i'm going to give you a blizzard of every measure of activity yeah. we have and you can pick out what it is you want to see like i don't want Ahead, sorry, sorry. No, no, no go for it there you go okay all right <laughs> <laughs> um i like i don't want i don't want a project to have to do that right mm -hmm. like we provide yeah it should be it, you know, it, again to to josh's point like you if you give me a requirement and you don't tell me exactly how to do it i'm i'm gonna do one of two things i'm gonna ask you how exactly to do it and if we don't have the time to do that I'm going to bring you my interpretation of your ask, right? Um, so, so one, to have a very clear ask about how to do these things, or two, make it not even necessary for you to need to do those things, right? We have dev stats, 
Yeah. Great. That's def like I, what I'm seeing is a, a stripped down, stripped down JPEG of of what could be well, a DevStats doesn't, dashboard. Well, right? it doesn't work for sandbox proposals though, because those projects are not in DevStats yet. Gotcha. So are they are they not allowed to be in DevStats, or are they are they not in DevStats? Well, for any project to be added to DevStats, that's a manual step by a CNCF staffer. So it's not going to happen until they are already accepted. Um, right. Okay. So I mean. They are, but this is due diligence for cube edges are already a CNCF project, right? Yeah. So if you're already a CNCF project, then that totally works. Anything sandbox on up should be already in dev stats. Right. Right. So yeah. so for for sandbox and low, well for pre sandbox, right? Then mm -hmm. the requ the requirement is whatever it mm -hmm. is. It's much lower, and I don't think we need to mm -hmm. prove any contribution. Yeah. What I'm saying is for a CNCF project. You, we should leverage the resources that we have. Mm -hmm. So if we ask people for contributions, it should be appointing someone to a DevStats dashboard. And Well, honestly, we shouldn't right? even have to ask them to do anything, right? If DevStats is there, the SIG should already know that, right? That's, Kubit that's, wants that's, a review. Yeah, that's, I'm going to click on their DevStats. That's, yeah. that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, this should, not be, this should not be work, additional work. Well, yeah. What I wanted to say, too, is like, Honestly, they're giving the, like, they're interpreting this as this, right? Like, this meaning the CNCF requirements is this. And yeah. my thing is, I, I'm kind of okay with that as long as they tell us why. Like, why was it, why is this chart important to you? Like, what is this showing me? It's almost like a, like, if you're going to give us a chart, then at least say, why is this important? Why is this impactful? Why is this, you know what I mean? Like kind of like, I mean, I mean to, to, to be work. fair, no? to be fair, if you look at the contributor commits thing immediately above it, it says like demonstrate a substantial ongoing flow of commits and merge contributions. And then they show the chart. So, I okay. mean, they, they are. I didn't see that one. I saw. And are you, you're looking at the DD doc? Yep. And I'm seeing. Go to page layer. Go to page seven. Oh, I'm actually I'm doing line by line. Hold on. Okay. I was just doing the rich diff. <laughs> <laughs> um. Wait. Okay. So. I was looking at uh, CubeEdge's general document. Oh, here it is. Got it. Okay. Yeah, like, so it says, we are can seeing a consistent stream of improvements and features from the maintainers in the community. Oh, sorry. You know what I'm looking at? I'm looking at if you scroll to the bottom, there's a DD doc. Oh, yeah. I didn't see I, that one. Yeah. Yeah. I thought this was, I actually thought this was an oh, issue, God. not a PR. Um, but the DD doc is stronger. Okay. Yeah. See, I was looking at the line by line PR. That's why I was just, that's why I'm like, it would be because like they kind of said it in the, in their PR where it was like, yeah, look, this shows maintainer improvement. Yeah. And it, but it's still kind of like, but what does that mean though? You know? Um, so hold on, let me, I'm going to read the DD right now. I mean, it's, it's, it's 14 pages. So, <laughs> oh, wow. so maybe not what we're waiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, the, 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 the general idea is like, this is something that we can definitely take a look at and see if, you know, does this, I, I figure if they're, they're doing a DD, it's because someone has, someone has like looked over this and, and given them a template of some sort, yeah. Yeah. right? I think the, you know, if you consider the, um, like submitting a sandbox proposal itself, right? Yep. And trying to figure out what you need to, to put in there. Like they give you a, an idea, um, but I think that, I, I think that what we initially wrote up for like DAX was, was kind of off the cuff, right? Um, so, so yeah, short version, I agree. Um, the, so mm -hmm. I feel, I feel dumb right now. I'm sorry. Hold on. And that was probably not the right word I should use either. I, um, for this, pro the, the word dot or God, not word doc, the Google doc that I'm looking at right now is, is this the template that all the due diligence get the get this, this is a template. I, I have a feeling because they've got, they've got like points, right? CNCF, yeah, CNCF graduation criteria specifies point and then 
cube okay. edge answer, right? Okay, yeah. Cool. I didn't know yeah. if this was, I, I can ask her obviously, but I didn't know if, if this was like Alina's yeah. document. Like, I didn't know if this is like a TOC document. That's what um, I was Well, it's being, it looks like it's being run by Elena as the. Yeah, uh, so there's a general template, but a bunch of the SIGs have modified it for their individual okay. SIG. Okay. Um, because, for example, if it's a SIG networking review, there's a bunch of stuff they want to know about how it integrates with other network layers of um, cloud native networks that, you know, is not going to be present for other kinds of projects. Um, the. Um, yeah, so look, they do that. Yeah, now I'm on now I'm on the page. I think are you on the same page, the open governance? Is that what you were looking at? Steve? Yeah. And I was actually poking around their repo and honestly, I would green light them on governance based on looking at their repo. They have pretty clearly documented governance. And from what I can see that has resulted in vendor independent running of the project. So yeah. um, I mean, I could delve into it some more to see if there's sort of a hidden imbalance, but I don't know that's enough reason to block it. Um, yeah, this, I mean, this just the, um, sorry. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so just the speed read of the, the DD, like, it yeah. looks pretty strong. Yeah, that's why I'm yeah. thinking that, too. It might be nice for one of us to comment on the issue, too, and say that, like, looks dope <laughs> yeah. like it's not like we don't yeah. say like hey this is some official thing but we've just done a glance over and like hey that's actually a really good idea like we'll say hey we've done a glance over but if y'all want to come and give us a like a little update or a presentation on what y'all are doing that we would be totally down for that you know what yeah. i mean so kind of saying like hey we've done a glance over but if you want to come talk to us more about contributor strategy and or governance topics, we'd love to hear how y'all are running it, you know? I mean, I would, I would love to do something um, almost more asynchronous, right? Like if we can, and not from the perspective of like, what can y'all present to us, but maybe even like, what can we do to help you, right? So what does like, so our, like our VP of engineering has a for every email that he sends, like there's a, a feedback form included, right, at the bottom in his signature, right? And he's like, if you ever want to chat with me or, or you want to submit anonymous feedback about how we're doing stuff, you can just submit it, right? So I think, I think a feedback form could be interesting for like, what would you fix about this process, right? Are you, are you having a good time trying to submit for, uh, for incubation? Like where are the gaps, right? And then, and then doing a comparison across multiple submitters, um, whether it's in the form of feedback, uh, you know, feedback, quick, you know, quick sheet or, or full on survey, right? Um, I ultimately, ultimately, I just, want to make sure that we are like do we need to pull them in for a presentation i know i mentioned presentation earlier but... no I'm, no i'm saying i'm saying that as like an as like an option to them of like it doesn't need to be like i'm saying like hey if you want to come give us like a presentation or if you want to come talk to us or ask us a question like just kind of opening the door of like we're here and we yeah. want to know more about you and if you want to know more about us kind of thing so yeah, i take it I dig it. Just kind of like a friendly olive branch. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I'm looking at it. I don't like, I haven't seen one flag at all. And my, but my other thing is too, like, how do we really know though? Like, obviously, you know, we've got, and we're like so close to time. I'm sorry. Like, obviously we've got this block of things like, Hey, they've got 14 maintainers and yeah, we can go and look at that. But like, you really don't know about like what's going on until you're like legit in the project. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. Like, yeah. so like even on the Kubernetes side, sometimes it's hard to see like, oh, we've got blockers in certain areas and you don't necessarily see that from like a blurb of me talking about it, you know? And it's, it's also like, it's also size overall too, right? Cause if you look at, you look at Kubernetes compared to like maybe any other project in, in the CNCF, right? It's like, we've got, 
we've got macro and micro issues, right? So if you touch if you touch something on the sub project level, or you touch something on the working group or SIG level, um, might be very different um, than you, your consideration if you were touching something as a steering member, right? Looking at how all of these things interconnect, right? You might not not necessarily be doing that. So I think like someone's ingress point to your project is is important too, right? And if if the you know if the project is like a singular repo, then that's it's fairly easy to craft that experience, right? But you know, for Kubernetes, where we're like 200 repos or something, 200 plus repos maybe even, um, it's a little it's a little trickier to like, you know, make make sure that that's a good experience for everyone, assuming that they, um, you know, if they don't have the right pointers to canonical docs like K community, right? Yep. Yeah. True or false? Hmm. You know what? What? I don't think it's a case of not being open, but I'm actually looking at, because we have dev stats, that CubeEdge definitely has an issue with being dominated by Huawei in terms of who's writing the actual code. Um, the, um, Are we looking at commits or contributions? And also, we I don't think we need to get into this now or anything. Yeah, 